Hello, nurses. This is Camp with Nursing Camp, and this is Cardiac Camp, and I'm going to talk to you about orthostatic vital signs and urinary output and perfusion, because we've been talking about cardiac output and perfusion and mean arterial pressure. And these are my nurses' notes and scribble notes for Nursing Camp. And we're covering this sticky note here. Okay, let's talk about it. Urinary output, 30. 400. What do I mean by 3,400? Well, 3,400 urinary output, 30 cc's an hour. So 30 cc's an hour is minimal amount of urine output. So how do I know it's 30 cc's? Well, you know, I have a Foley or something like that. Okay. Well, if I have 30 cc's, that means that the mean arterial pressure is, oops, mean arterial pressure is greater than 60 to 65. If it is greater than 60 to 65, I should have urinary output. So I shouldn't have any um, elevations. What I mean by that is no elevations in my BUN and creatinine. Okay, These shouldn't be elevated. If these aren't elevated and these are okay, then I could assume that the mean arterial pressure is greater than 65, and my urine output is 30 cc's an hour. Okay, that's interesting because 30 cc's an hour is not just an hour. It's also called 3,400. So I need to have at least 30 cc's an hour or greater than 400 in 24 hours. So the rule of thumb is on the NCLEX in questions is, is that just because you 30, see 30 cc's, what was it for 24 hours? And if it's greater than 400, then that's adequate output. If it's less than 400, there's a problem in, in 24 hours. So if you see urine output in questions and you have 150 cc's, right, you would times that by 24 hours. Well, that would give you a, an output of 3,600 cc's in 24 hours. That's too much. Okay, so they're at risk for, you know, uh, dehydration. So I would monitor their BUN and creatinine for that. And with dehydration, the BUN is elevated with the normal creatinine. This is covered in another lecture, and that's called 21. Okay, now... So rule is that monitoring urine output and answers are generally distractors. You know, in questions, they, they're they going to be specific. They'll say 30 cc's an hour. They're going to give you a number. But if they just say monitor urine output, what the heck does that mean? I don't know. It's too vague. And vague is not NCLEX. You know, NCLEX is very specific. 30 cc's, you pay attention to the numbers because the numbers are everything, especially with the NCLEX. All right, and also we would assess their blood pressure. And we assess their blood pressure and mean arterial pressure. And that needs to be greater than 60 to 65. Okay. All right, next thing, orthostatic vital signs. So orthostatic vital signs are called 20-20-10. Twenty, twenty, ten. Now I've said before twenty, ten, ten. And, but more important is is that any variations of twenty is problematic. Okay, so NCLEX doesn't get into specifics about, um, you know, just on the cusp of this volume. And that's true for everything. When you look at potassium, 3.5 to 5.1, they're not going to give you, they're not going to give you 5.2, right? They'll give you 6.5. They're going to give you something so obvious that it's, that you need to know that that's abnormal. So if they're giving you a, a uh, calcium, for example, right? So calcium, you know, which is 6, 8, 10, um, they give you a calcium, a low calcium, they're going to give you 4. Okay, they're not going to dance around with these numbers. All right, so always remember that. But orthostatics is um, specific to safety. 
and that's a cube. Because how do we do orthostatics? Well, we have them lay down first. Okay. Then we have them sit up. Okay. And then we have them stand up. All right. So we never ever start them from sitting to standing, right? Because they could fall onto their face. All right. So that would be not safe. <laughs> so what we generally will do is, is then we ask them, you know, are they dizzy? Do they have symptomatics? Symptomatic problems of dehydration. It's generally to check for dehydration. Uh, we usually do it before they uh, are discharged. But there are other causes, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is that these other causes are, you know, the standard. So um, those are sand fan. And sand fan are all causes that can cause orthostatics. So they, they are principles around safety. The first one is sand, S, sins. Okay? This is like Tamsulin. Tamsulin is given for BPH. Okay? And the problem with Tamsulin is, is that it's going to uh, cause orthostatic hypotension. And you, that's why you give Tamsulin at nighttime. So that's an HS med. That's important, and that's a specific about time. So BPH meds you give at night because of orthostatic vital signs, and they'll fall on their face if you give it to them in the morning. Okay. Next one is um, ACE inhibitors. You'll see my ACE inhibitors lecture. That's another lecture. Please watch that. Um, but first dose, ACE inhibitors, same thing, fall on their face, safety. Nitro, nitro is another one because of vasodilation, okay? So their vasodilation, they can't handle this swing. Normally people will have vascular tone, it's going to contract. But because they're extremely vasodilated from the nitro, they can't, so then they fall on their face. So nitro, you have them sit up at the end of the bed, they dangle, then they move. Dexacin, another one. Sin. And then uh, first dose. First dose. Arbs. Arbs are called orthosartan. Okay. Ortho because... Arbs are very specific to orthostatic hypotension. Sartan is their, is their end class name. So low sartan, for example, sartan. So I call it orthosartan because your biggest indicator is orthostatics with sartan. And that's covered in my uh, Arbs lecture. See that lecture. All right. And the last one is nitroprusside like nitro, causes extreme vasodilation and causes them to fall on their face. And rule number one is don't kill patients and we uh, keep them safe. Okay, so a quick review. Urinary output is the example of the result of poor perfusion. So always pay attention to urinary output from a, um, oops, and that is 30 cc's or 424 hours. That needs to be greater than. If it's less than, there's a problem with urinary output. And it's always a problem with perfusions. Mean arterial pressure indicates that there's a problem with perfusion. That needs to be greater than 60 to 65%. Next thing is, is the orthostatics, 20-20-10. And what that is, is that if there's a variations of ortho, off blood pressure, are they orthostatic? Why? And we also prevent that because it's not only just for dehydration, other medications, more importantly, like ARBs, nitro, ACE inhibitors, and your SINs, like Tamsulin, Dexacin. 
Those are all acute. My name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and this is Cardiac Camp, and I'm covering my cardiac health assessment. Um, this is directly from my uh, sticky note, um, orthostatic meds, and follow me on Pinterest, Facebook, and say hello, and make comment, and I'll talk to you soon. Nurse on. These are my scribble notes.